Hello, and welcome to how to easily check data types in MATLAB functions and objects. If you write code for other people, and you want to make sure the data they're passing in is data your function can handle, and give them good error messages when they pass in things you don't expect, this is the video for you. Let's look at how to write some data checks. Here I have a class called City Location. This represents a city as a latitude and longitude point on Earth. This class has three properties, city, the name of the city, and latitude and longitude, both in degrees, as well as a method called distance we'll use later. So I mentioned that city is the name of the city, which is typically a single piece of text. So let's tell MATLAB that. So to do that, I type the size, one by one, and the class, string. And the default value for this is a one by one string with no characters. So latitude is usually a single number between minus 90 and 90 degrees. To tell MATLAB that, we'll do similarly, one by one, double, since it's a number. And then to tell it, it must be between minus 90 and 90 degrees, type a curly brace, start typing must be, hit tab, and you see this long list of must be functions. These are known as validation functions. And this is how we tell MATLAB the characteristics of the data. So I'm checking it must be in the range, minus 90 to 90. So must be in range, looks like a good candidate. So type latitude, because that's what we're checking here. And then type minus 90 to 90, close everything off. And that's all I have to do. Longitude must be between minus 180 to 180. So I can do something similar there as well. Now let's try seeing what your user will see when they create these city location objects. So if I do L equals city location, I see those properties with our default values. So let's try setting city. And I'm going to call it native. And notice that I'm setting in this in as a char rather than the string that we just specified in the file. If I hit enter, I don't actually see an error, and that's because MATLAB knows that char is convertible to string, so it allows for your user to send in the char, but still gives you the data type you expect. So let's look at latitude. Natick is about 43 degrees in latitude. I see that set just fine. What happens if your user uses the 0 to 360 degree convention for longitude? instead of the minus 180 to 180 you're expecting. So Natick is about 288 degrees in longitude, specified that way. If I hit enter, I see an error message telling me that the value must be between minus 180 and 180. So now I, as the user, know how to fix the data that I'm sending in. Let's use those city location objects in a function. Here I have a function called show cities on map, which will take an array of those city location objects and display them on a map. At the top of this function, you may notice an arguments block, and the format of the lines in that block should look familiar to you by now, since they're the same format as that property validation we just discussed. So the first object, first input, is cities, and that is a one by any size array of the city location objects. The second input is a little bit special because this is how we're going to specify name value arguments to this function. So the second line in the arguments block you can see there is options dot city title, and city title is the name of the name value argument, and that's a one by one logical defaulting to false, and that's whether to show the selected city name at the title of the plot. The second name value pair is distance table, which is also a one by one logical defaulting to false, and that's whether to show a table of city to city distances. The third name value argument is color, and notice that there is no size or class specified here because they are in fact optional. Instead, I have a validation function called must be marker color and a default value of an RGB triplet of 100. Now, this 
must be marker color validation is a custom validation function that you can write yourself. And in this case, it was written to be flexible. You can accept those RGB triplets like we have for the default value, or you can send in a piece of text that is the name of a color that MATLAB recognizes. To use these name value arguments inside the body of the function, just continue to use that struct notation like you see on line 11. Let's look at what the user sees when they use this show cities on map function. So I have a helper function that has generated a one by 33 array of city location objects that represents each of the MathWorks offices around the world. So let's call show cities on map. And what I get is a world map with red markers on it, each one being a MathWorks office. If I click on a marker, it gets larger, but not much else happens. What happens if I make that common mistake of having a 33 by one array instead of a one by 33? What happens is that MATLAB is able to recognize it can take that column vector and transform it to a row vector much like it did the same for the chart string conversion earlier. So let's try turning on some more data. If I start specifying those name value pairs like normal, I hit tab, I see that list of name value pairs for free. So let's turn on city title and just for fun, distance table. And what I get is a world map same world map as before, but now an empty table on the right. If I click on one of these markers, I get the name of the city in the title, and then I get the distance to each of the other offices in this table. So in 21A, there is now a different way to specify your name value arguments that better visually ties the name and the value. So if I take off these quotes and insert an equal sign. Hit enter. I see the same options that I had selected before. Let's look at what happens when a user sends in something your function doesn't expect. So if I can't remember city title and I call it city name, send it in. The error message tells the user exactly what the name value pairs you allow are. So now they know how to fix their code. So what happens if I send in a value that the function does not expect? So for color, I mentioned that it will also accept uh, the names of colors that MATLAB knows. Let's try fuchsia. And because of the way that custom validator was written, uh, we see the user sees this list of the names that it will accept. So now they also know how to fix that, even for a custom validator. That's the end of our demo for today. Hopefully it's helped you learn how to write robust code that makes it easier for your users to figure out where they went wrong with their inputs. If you'd like to see more information, please see the documentation pages on function argument validation, validating property values, or argument validation functions. Thanks for watching.